I'm going to invite Adam Stewart for um, some reflections. Adam is the Head of Public Sector UK and Ireland for Google Cloud. Over to you, Adam. Thanks very much. And thank you, Alex. So good morning, everyone. Great to see you here today. Yes, my name is Adam Stewart, and I lead the public sector business for UK for Google Cloud. And I'm delighted to welcome you all here today to Innovation 2023. So at Google Cloud, our mission for the public sector is to work with governments as they adapt to a digital future. From what I have seen in the past few years and learned from working alongside you is about how government is adapting. I'm forever su surprised and also inspired about the critical work that you deliver. And when I'm talking across government departments, I often hear the challenges that you face, and it's clear that there have been significant barriers to innovation across the public sector. From policy to delivery, we often find competing priorities, budget constraints, legacy technologies, and skills gaps. And this can make innovation hard. Hard to conceive what could be possible, and even harder to deliver and scale innovation to meet the complex needs across the systems of the UK today. But rather than focusing on the challenges, my natural optimism for the sector looks at the opportunities ahead, and I think, what an opportunity for us all to build on the momentum that we gathered through the pandemic, to harness the support from policy, cabinet office, the central digital and data um, office, and the new, newly established department for science, innovation, and technology. We've got the opportunity to make digital the backbone to deliver government processes and to engage citizens in new and seamless ways and bring innovation to all aspects of public life. I think that with the right ingredients, we could really harness this moment to create a step change in delivering innovation across the public sector. You might think, well, that's easy for me to stand here this morning and preach to you about that, coming from Google, where innovation is baked into our DNA. And, and you're absolutely right. Google has been around for 24 years, and from the very start, right to this very minute, we've been able to power innovation at global scale. In fact, just last week, Google Cloud, we announced and launched our latest artificial intelligence, intelligence capabilities. And one example of how these innovations will impact is an app building tool for organizations to create their own AI powered digital assistants in minutes. So not weeks and months, but in minutes. And I know some of you in the room are following, following these innovations and announcements with excitement, and you can see how they can um, uh, benefit the public sector. I also see others in the room that may be thinking this level of innovation is not achievable. It's not applicable to the historical corridors of Whitehall. So that's where I'd like to set the record straight this morning. For us, innovation isn't wacky ideas created in a bubble in California. We believe that innovation is a robust and scientific process, a process of iteration that powered revolutions. From the compass, the steam engine, the internet, we know these things are hard to achieve, but we get there. And that's what I want to hone in on today, how we harness innovation with purpose. So building out from the idea that during the pandemic, we created momentum for innovation, we found three powerful themes during some recent research with large organizations, and I think they can help us innovate within the public sector with purpose. First, the mission. And for us, that means responsiveness, Technology leaders highlighted the need for flexibility, resilience, and redundancy in operations and development and deployment. The freedom to adapt and transform in line with user needs or other important external factors. And for all of you, delivering to citizens and government uh, the needs that paramount and being able to pivot to meet new expectations and ongoing disruption head on is key. So I've seen this in action, for example, in our work with the NHS, where we've helped Yorkshire and Humber patient care record to improve patient outcomes across 74 different healthcare organizations by improving access to more than 5 million citizens' health and care data. As Alex mentioned, and um, previously at the Future for Work Summit last year, putting the user first is central to innovation. I couldn't agree more across the whole of government today. And that can be supercharged by what, we can, by what we see in the second theme, using data to shape and drive decisions and innovate operations. Forward-looking companies disrupt, are using disruptive and intelligent technologies to automate processes, making intelligent predictions and streamlining management and operations. 
It sounds simple, but of course, government data is complex, large scale, and often in silos. That's why we're so excited about innovations like the integrated data service from ONS, Office for National Statistics, bringing together ready-to-use data to enable faster and wider collaborative analysis for the public good. To look at where innovation can be targeted, calculating and quantifying the risks, using data to make progress. This also applies to protecting users and government data with confidence, which was the final trend. As data proliferates, leaders and citizens want more control and greater access to their data with security as a cr crucial priority. Knowing that your data is never capitalized um, nor compromised and just protected through industry leading standards, responsible data practices and easy to use privacy controls, this provides the safe space for innovation to flourish. I think of our work with New York City Cyber Command, where we've helped them to keep all digital services safe and secure. And this enables teams to innovate in other areas with confidence that their operations are secure. I know our ongoing work with NCSC and also with Mandiant, our recently acquired uh, cybersecurity organization, will further enable our customers to shape their security to meet an evolving set of security, th security threats with that same confidence. So each of these three trends sheds light on what the ingredients are to drive further innovation. A clear mission, the data to support it, track it, measure it, and the confidence that all of that is done in a safe and secure way that you can control. But I'd like to add one more. The last one, the vital one, as, as Alex has mentioned, people and also culture. And you'll hear later on the, from the skills panel that my colleague John Park will be joining. And you may even have read our digital skills report produced with GGF last year, looking at digital skills across the civil service. Skills are essential, of course, but for me, it's also about culture. The culture to have an idea, to test it, fail at it maybe, and learn and improve and grow. This is also crucial. One of my favorite quotes from Google's co-founder, Larry Page, highlights exactly why culture is so crucial when it comes to powering innovation. Larry said, with a healthy disregard for the impossible, people can achieve almost anything. Put simply, letting your people try, test, and improve will enable innovation at a magnitude unachievable with just great tech or processes. What I see in the room today with my customers and partners in public sector and across government is that for possibly the first time, we have the opportunity to do almost anything. Innovation is certainly within our reach. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the conference.